in trouble. All right, we got him. Hey guys, welcome back to Triple F Shooting. Have you ever wondered what happens when your wife takes your carry gun? Keeping them all pretty much high chest. Yep. The Smith & Wesson Shield Plus happens. Uh, got this entirely out of necessity because I initially had a Springfield Hellcat and my wife decided that she liked that quite a bit, started to carry that and shoots very well with it. So I stumbled across a deal, or at least what looked like a deal, on a Shield Plus and tried it out. Lucky for me, I think I like this quite a bit more than a Hellcat. So, let's get into it. Okay, so we're gonna make this fairly quick. Uh, there are lots of videos on concealed carry handguns. I am no one special to tell you what you should or should not carry, but I happen to really, really like this particular pistol. The Smith & Wesson Shield has been out for some time now. Uh, the original gun was either a 7 or 8 plus 1, I believe, and it was an excellent gun. It came out at a time where something this size um, with that amount of capacity was maybe not as easy to find as others, and did an excellent job at filling that role. As time went on, you get other guns like the P365 where you get quite a bit smaller than this with a 10 round standard capacity in your flush fit and you can go larger than that. And that sort of revolutionized everything and now everybody and their brother is chasing this tiny pistol with high capacity. So why do I think this one shines among the others like the SIG or the Hellcat, uh, Glock 43, or Glock 43X would be the more appropriate comparison. Uh, this particular pistol doesn't necessarily do anything terribly better than any of those other ones. If you want the smallest with the highest capacity, I think your best bet's still the 365. Uh, if you want something that basically is a direct copy of it, you can go with the Hellcat. Uh, it just has a different name on it and gets one more round in it. They probably did that on purpose. If you really, really like Glock for some reason, go with the 43X, uh, especially with the shield, or I'm sorry, the, um, yeah, I think it's shield arms magazines that makes it a 15 round gun, and that's pretty awesome. But if you end up being a little bit like me, um, I have large size hands, but very skinny fingers. Uh, so most guns, I don't have a problem getting most of my fingers on, as you can see with a Springfield Hellcat, real quick. These are very small guns. With the pinky extension magazine, I get all four fingers on there very well. The problem is I'm missing quite a bit of the heel of my hand there. Now, very compact package, that's kind of the point. But if you are shooting and you want the thing to be as effective as possible, losing grip is going to cause issues for you. So. With the flush fit mag and a Smith & Wesson Shield Plus, I am still in that same boat where I'm losing a little bit of hand, but I do have considerably more grip in this direction. And I think that in itself is my favorite thing about this pistol is just the general ergonomics or the geometry of the grip. Part of that grip also has very nice stipling, but for whatever reason, this pistol shoots better for me than the 365, the Hellcat, the Glock 43X. Um, this thing, it, difficult to explain, but I believe it's that width or length of pull, if you will, to the trigger on this particular gun. And then the texture on it is really nice. And for whatever reason, when shooting the gun, it does not recoil or it perceived by me doesn't recoil as bad. I'm able to keep strings of fire uh, pretty well on track. And when I draw the thing, it's pretty much pointing 
right where I need it to. The sights don't need a bunch of extra lining up or anything like that. So the grip angle works well for my particular taste. And that grip gets the gun right on target. As soon as I bring it up, it's right where I need it to be. So show you a couple shooting sections with this pistol just to kind of give you an idea of what I'm talking about in relation to shootability. Pocket. I don't know if you can see it. Probably not. Let's do two more. That's gonna be five nine. Okay, so you can see the thing, at least in my hands and my own perspective, shoots pretty well. Uh, I do not do as well with the Springfield Hellcat. That is the only other thing that I would say I have as much time, at least in this category, on. Um, and I really do think that's because of the size differences. Now, I'll throw in a couple of pictures here, but basically where the Hellcat's geometry is different is the grip is not nearly as thick from back to front. The length of pull to the trigger is much shorter, so I feel like my hand is wrapping way further around the gun than it is on the Smith & Wesson. Other than that, this thing just feels generally snappy. Not sure if that's, again, just because of the design or strictly based on that grip. The texture is nice. It's not quite as rough as that Shield Plus, but it just feels a little bit snappier in hand, and I for whatever reason, struggle with when I present the gun, if I don't get just the most perfect grip ever, my sights are a little bit off to my left fairly regularly or off to my right because I'm like wrapping, I have to sort of consciously think about how I'm wrapping that grip so that I'm not coming up, you know, angled at any one side. The size of this thing is a huge pro for me. It still conceals really well, especially with the flush fit mag. Honestly, I typically run the 13 rounder now this is one point of contention for me but you can see the 13 rounder is just a hair longer and that's typically what i run that lets me get my entire hand on the gun and makes it extremely shootable same thing with the hellcat now you may have noticed that it did not chamber or did not seat very tightly uh that's probably my we'll do cons first but that's probably one of the cons that it's not a huge deal but if you have round in the chamber and go to load a full magazine you are pressing pretty hard and that doesn't give me a ton of confidence uh because you know i just don't want my mag to come flying out under the first round or you draw the pistol and your mag falls that's never a good thing so that's kind of a con it seems like the mags do not have the depth uh, necessary to be able to load on a full magazine with a round in the chamber very easily. You are talking 13 rounds, so you can pretty much just put 13 rounds in it, rack the gun, and you got 13. That plus one is nice. Uh, your mileage may vary, depends on what you'd like to carry. The other con that is glaring in this particular instance, you can see I do have a weapon mounted light on this, this is a Streamlight TLR6. We're not going to get too terribly into it because this isn't a light review, it's a gun review. This thing has no accessory rail whatsoever. It is basically the exact same thing as an M&P shield, 
it just has a very slightly wider grip and the magazines are a little bit different so that it can hold 13 rounds rather than the 8 in the full extension mag on the older version. As far as I am aware, this is pretty much the only light that you can easily put on this gun and still have access to holsters. There are pick rail um, adapters that you can put on this thing um, that does extend the body of the gun down just a little bit and that's going to force you to go to sort of a custom holster maker. I haven't looked around a ton. There might be holster makers out there that are already working with things like that that you can just jump on and buy it. You're not having to call and have them mold anything or send your gun or anything like that. Uh, but as far as I've looked, this is the easiest light to install and have accessibility to most holsters. So that's a huge downside. This is all I got. Works fine. Uh, it takes a goofy battery and the light is only about a hundred lumens or so. It does have a laser in there, but I don't really use lasers on pretty much anything currently. So all I'm worried about is that light and it's a light, but it doesn't throw a huge beam. Uh, on things like the Hellcat P365 and Glock 43X, at least in its newer iteration, I can do things like mount this O-Light. Again, at the time when this came out, there really weren't any lights for it, so this O-Light had to be modified just to fit it. So this is this light's only gun now. Um, but this thing is rechargeable without taking it off the gun or taking it apart, and it throws like 500 lumens, so that's pretty cool. But that's really the only con I have with this thing. I think maybe the optic plate is kind of an odd cut, so you have to, you can do crimson trace and I think maybe uh, shield arms. Not sure if everything fits. I'll research that and throw in something right here for you um, as we go. But that might be a con, just depends. I don't really plan on running a red dot on it, at least at the moment. Now, pros with the pistol. For whatever reason, this gun shoots really well for me. From most other reviews you'll see and people you'll talk to that own this and have a couple other of the kind of micro size 9 mils, this thing shoots or is the easiest to shoot out of the group. Not sure if that's just down to geometry and then the basic design or what, but it shoots really well and is really easy to keep on target through strings of fire and it points pretty well and all that good stuff. Another pro is it's not ungodly expensive, comparatively speaking. Um, when this was purchased, I think it was Grab a Gun, had a deal for this cute little man purse bag that is now somewhere off. I don't even know where it's at anymore because it's sort of useless as far as I was concerned. Uh, but it comes with five magazines, so one 10-rounder and four 13-rounders. And at the time, that was about 430 bucks. And this is the night sight equipped with the optic plate. So that is very inexpensive, comparatively speaking. Uh, Glock 43X, I think you're pretty much constantly running around 500 bucks. Once this was a little less expensive, I saw kits similar with the Hellcat where you get multiple magazines and like a pistol case for about 500. But as far as value, this is high on that scale. So really, really good job by Smith & Wesson for keeping the price low. And every once in a while, you can find it with all the mags you'd ever need because I think these are around 30 bucks a pop. So five mags with the gun for 430 bucks and a cute little med kit and a, you know, basically a boo-boo pouch. Really good deal. Another pro, uh, the trigger on this gun is far superior to its predecessor. The original M&P shield has kind of that split hinged, or not split, sorry, but a hinged trigger. It was a little bit spongy. The gun shot fine, uh, but this is a huge improvement over it. Uh, increases your ability to shoot a little bit more rapidly. The reset's very tactile. Everything feels pretty good. Other pro to this thing, uh, the sights that come on it when you get the night sights are true glows, a big orange front dot, and then you have your blacked out rear that will glow at night with the two tritium inserts, so that runs really smoothly. If it is something you're worried about, you do have a witness hole, so you can tell if the gun is loaded or not. That does absolutely nothing for you in the dark, but if you are out on the range and you need to see 
if you're loaded or not, you can see the brass down inside uh, real quick. When you chamber around, you cannot see any extractor bump or anything like that that you'd get on something like a Glock. So be aware of that. The only real thing you can do to tell if it's loaded or not other than like press check is you have this witness hole on top. Last couple of pros we have is again 13 plus one capacity uh, which gets you right up there next to something like a Glock 19 with a much smaller profile, a lot easier to carry. You do lose a little bit of barrel length so keep that in mind. Finally, I haven't had any hang-ups with this gun. It's been extremely reliable in the few hundred rounds I've put through it. Uh, right now, trying out these Norma MHPs, uh, which is just a monolithic projectile, but as you can see, it looks just like a full metal jacket, just a little bit fancied up. So I'm not sure, ballistically speaking, how these do. They haven't been around very long, and you can find them pretty cheap sometimes, so it makes me wonder, but they cycle really well in the gun. But it runs 147 grain Hornady, uh, the Critical Duties plus P's, um, the SIG V-Crown jacketed hollow point. So, so far, I haven't had anything choke it. The only thing I have had, reliability speaking, which isn't the gun's fault, it is a basically a placement issue and my grip, I tend to hold down the slide stop on this thing. If I have video of that, I'll put it in right now. Probably held the grip down. That's gonna be low. five nine. But because of my two-handed grip, I tend to run my thumb right along the slide stop, and quite a bit. I'll be shooting along, get a click rather than an open slide, which means on the reload, we're racking the gun again, which you can see in the video. Uh, that is not the gun's issue so much. When the gun gets this small, they have to put it somewhere, and I do the same thing on the Hellcat. I do the same thing on my Glocks every once in a while. So that is a me issue. It is not so much a gun issue. I'm the common denominator there. That pretty much takes care of the pros and cons. I can't think of anything else negative about the thing, other than maybe that the uh, the slide cover for if you're, the optic cut is polymer, which it's not a huge deal, but it is plastic. It is not, at least as far as I can tell, it is not metal like the rest of the gun. Um, again, not a huge deal, but that's something to be aware of. So, should you buy a Smith & Wesson Shield Plus? In my opinion, the gun runs really well. I like to carry it appendix. You could very easily carry this in pretty much any other position. Um, it is a very slim gun. It's a little bit larger than something like a Hellcat or a 365. So if that causes any aversion for you, uh, and if you are lefty, this gun is absolutely not ambidextrous. So another thing to keep in mind, every bit of the controls are meant for a right-handed shooter, not a wrong-handed shooter. So sorry for you lefties. I actually really like this gun. I was surprised. Again, I bought the thing kind of thinking, well, it's really cheap. It's a good deal. I'll run it for a while, and if I don't like it, I'll sell it and get another Hellcat or something different. And I think this is going to be my carry gun for quite some time. Unfortunately, I am a guy that tends to want variety, so this probably isn't going to be the only thing I ever carry ever again because I'm just... A nerd. I should carry this all the time, but I like lots of different guns, so they're probably going to enter the rotation whether they should or not, so keep that in mind. But all things considered, the Shield Plus is an excellent pistol, definitely deserves a look. If you can get a hold of one to shoot before you buy it, I figure this is probably the gun that you're going to end up with. So thanks for watching Triple F Shooting. We'll see you in the next video. So one hand is a little too fast. All right, for our last bit, we're gonna see if we can hit anything at about 20 yards with this little guy. So we're gonna back her on up. That's about what we got. I got four rounds in the gun. 
Finishing off a box. Concentrate. Too low. Too high. And a hit. And I'm pretty sure, again, I held the slide lock.